<laughs> this is great crack. Surgery. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so how's it going? <laughs> hey! <laughs> um, so look, we're, we don't have any slides. <laughs> or any data. Uh, we're not doctors. We're not scientists. Yeah, we did start a vegetable shop though 15 years ago. So then maybe before we get this started, okay, let's do another thing. Can everyone just stand up for seconds? Just uh, work, I guess. But then we're just doing not to explain it. Okay. Okay, what we're gonna do, okay. For 10 seconds, we're going to do this together, okay? This is going to give more energy and keep them all engaged. We're all eight. More community! Okay, so for 10 seconds, everyone just jump up and down. Five, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I'm getting to play. I'm getting to play. Um, so I guess uh, we're, we're Dave and Steve, we're identical twins, and as we said, we're not doctors, we're not scientists, um, but we, we are, like today has been very much, as you all know, it's been about the data of why we should eat more vegetables, why we should eat more plant-based, and I guess we've spent the last 15 years at the cold face, at the practical application of how you eat it, how you make it taste good, how you make others like it, etc. How you try to make vegetables sexy. Yes. <laughs> well, try to. Yeah, yeah, try to. Um, so, in terms of our business today, so we started, me and Dave, two hippies with a dream back 14 years ago of creating a happier, healthier world, a built community, something like, like something out of Walt Disney. But the business has gone from me and Dave, two hippies with a dream, where there's now about 120 people with us. The business turned over 10 million last year. We've written three number one best selling cookbooks. We have four cafes. We have thirty-three <laughs> vegan products in about a thousand stores in Ireland. So, so we're good. And we've gone on course. Oh, well, we've gone on course as well. Yeah, go on. Yeah, cool. <laughs> um, but I, I wanted to. So, so, so we've lo- we, we've been eating a plant based diet for nearly twenty years. So, but we want to talk to you about. Um, I want to tell you a little story first, and then we'll move from there, and we'll see where we go from there. And we might make something as well. Um, so back, as Stephen said, we started because we wanted to create a happier, healthier world, which sounds really cheesy and kind of like two kind of fairy tale kind of things. Um, but back about eight years ago, I was reading Dean Ornish's book. It must have been even nine years ago at this stage. I was reading his book, um, The Spectrum, I think it was. And Steve, Steve was working in the vegetable shop. We served in the vegetable shop. And Steve was working there. And he says to me, and he says, Dave, Dave, you know Mary Cow? Mary Cow came up to me and she said she lost two kilos in three months on Weight Watchers. I was like, well, cool, that's crazy. And he says, you know, this book you're reading by that doctor, I wonder if he reversed heart disease. And he said, I wonder could we, like, do what he did in a year, in, like, a month? Just like Weight Watchers, like, but for health. So like, okay, cool, that's interesting, Steve. So uh, we, we were, at the time, like, he was cooking in the kitchen, I was working in the vegetable shop, we were busy doing all sorts of stuff. So uh, that Monday morning, we walked down to the local doctor, local doctor in a little town of Greystones, and we knocked on his door, and we were, how are you, Brent? We're the lads in the happy pair. We've got this crazy idea of reversing heart disease in four weeks, and we need a nurse. Do you know any nurse? And he said, oh, jeez, lads, you're just look. Angela's next door. So we knock on Angela's door. Uh, how are you, Angela? Uh, we're the lads in the happy pair. We want to reverse heart disease in four weeks. Are you up for us? And Angela said, she said, oh my God, lads, I've been, I've been waiting for this opportunity the whole life. No, she didn't. No, no, she didn't. She said, how much you pay me? And you said 50 quid. And she said, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, we, so, we, so we had a nurse on board. So we were chefs at the time. So we wrote up posters and we said, reverse heart disease, skinny, sexy, delicious, and free. free. So we, we had 20 people signed up for our course. And uh, we, we were totally taking a punt at this. We didn't really know it was going to work. So, anyway, <laughs> so the chances, as you might, you could get the idea here. Yeah. Anyway, these 20 people came along, and the first night, Angela measured everyone's cholesterol, weight, and blood pressure. So we had three starting measurements, and they came upstairs to us, and as practical people, we taught them how to cook. It was pretty much a cooking course, and we put on videos of men and women in white coats with stethoscopes, because that gave a bit of validation. So, <laughs> so we were teaching, you've got to eat porridge instead of your cornflakes, vegetable soups, salads, and, and it was very much we were passing stuff around, because as, as, uh, as uh, one of the Michaels said earlier, he said, taste is worth a thousand words. So we were getting into taste a lot of things. It was da- Michael Clapper, Michael Clapper, sorry. <laughs> when Michael, when it was excellent. Um, <laughs> it was a bit like vegetable AA. It was kind of vegetable AA. And anyway, they came once a week for four weeks. And they came once a week, and we were, we were like a pair of preachers. We were preaching from the gospel of vegetables. And, uh, and obviously it came to the last night and me and Steve were, we were, like this was nine years ago, so it wasn't as 
like people didn't really admit to being vegan as much back then. And um, and, and I remember like the last night we were very quiet because we'd been promising these people, oh listen, you're it's gonna reverse your heart. Is that when I see your back? It'll definitely be gone. I swear. Well, yeah. So uh, we were promising the world the stars, and it came to the last night. Me and Steve were suddenly we were very quiet. We were like, Jeez, we hope this works. Like, and uh, and thankfully, just like Dean's work, there was an average drop in four weeks of cholesterol of twenty percent. There was uh, every blood pressure regulated. Most people lost weight. There was even two blind people who did the course, and miraculously, they're able to see. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that's a joke. <laughs> As you might imagine. Um, vegetables are good, but not quite that good. Um, but uh, like, I guess it is. I guess it was two vegetables, two lads that started a vegetable shop were just having a punt at it and seeing how this worked. And I guess it went on from there over the next couple of years. It, they just got more and more popular. We were doing bigger and bigger venues that we decided to build an online course. And on the back of that, I think we've had about 20,000 people through the online course in about 83 different countries. And it's amazing just in four weeks the difference. I know at this stage you all believe it, but um, yeah, vegetables. <laughs> well, and that's the result we partnered. Now we started partnering with the medical community, like we partnered with Dr. Allen, but the Happy Good course, with Jen, the Zeppelin's Happy Skin course. And we're kind of really trying to, I guess, try to practically apply leading science and try to scale it. Because ultimately, underneath everything we learn today, or that we learn today anyway, it's about eating more fruit and veg and how do we make it tasty and how do we get other people to like it and how do we all make more fruits and vegetables together. Very good. Uh, okay, so uh, we, we have five children, not together, but between us. Uh, and as a father, the one thing that I want for my kids is to be happy. And I, I think it's the one thing that unites every single person in this room here. You know, some people are, you know, some people might feel weird, some people feel special, some people feel unique, some people feel idiosyncratic. But the one point that I really want to talk about is community. And it's the one thing that I know when we first changed our diet, so we grew up in Greystones, County Wicklow. We often like in our little village, it's a bit like the Shire, you know, there's like the mountains to the side, there's a sea, and we all like food, and it's very nice and very pleasant. Uh, but when we were little, our community was, we used to go out and get drunk and chase women. That, that, was, that was happiness. That was as teenage lads, and that wasn't as 10 year olds. Uh, and that was happiness back then. Um, and then so we and our, can I say, can I do it? <laughs> and our, our community at the time was very much all our rugby playing, pints, swilling, cavemen, brethren. That was our community at the time. Let's sign it back to you. <laughs> uh, so we went away on a journey of self discovery and we came back to stinking hippies. You know, we had the top knot, we used to wear polyester shirts, I used to paint my fingernail, we used to plaid pants, I didn't wash because the soap was bad, man. <laughs> you know, we, we, we were really like, we, and we were vegan, and we were driving a van and we sold vegetables. So it was like, a lot of people didn't know what the hell happened to the lads. And, you know, we came back like to this small little town as two vegans 20, almost 20 years ago. And I remember it was like, if we don't get any friends or community around us, we're gonna end up drinking pints for that and going to chase some women again. I know we are. You know, so it's like so I remember um, calling up a friend of mine, Gavin Keller. He he had a brother, he was the only vegan in our town, Andy. And he was, you know, he, Andy was all slack, Andy the vegan. Uh, you know, this kind of thing. Uh, and I remember calling Gav up, hey Gav, Gav, can I talk with Andy? He said, Yeah, why don't you talk with Andy first? I just want to talk to Andy. And Andy got the phone, was like, hey Andy, just wonder can we sit down and talk about what it's like to be a vegan? And we had like a little vegan meetup, and in essence, it was it was to try to create a bit of community and support around this new lifestyle, these new values that we had. And ultimately, if I look at why we started our business, at the most selfish level, we started our business because we wanted to create a community that would support this new lifestyle and would try to encourage and get ripples. So the one thing that do you want to talk about? Yeah, you go. Okay. <laughs> um, like like I guess as as we said today, it was very much about the data of why we should eat more fruit and veg. But I think when you boil it back down to underneath a lot of these diseases like heart disease, diabetes, cancer, underneath a lot of them is loneliness, it's isolation, it's depression. So I think what we want to talk today about is, we've only got about 15 minutes to talk about this because we are potentially going to make chocolate mousse, um, is, is, um, is how we get together, how we come together more and really connect more because that's really true wealth when it really boils down to. And I know like, uh, as Stephen said, we've got five kids, obviously not together but between us. And uh, when, I, when, I bring them to, when I bring my kids to the playground, um, they go straight in, my daughters are eight and six, and they go straight into the playground, they go straight into the and go, hi, can I be your friend? And they made a friend. And then we're leaving, and, I, and they're, oh, how's the playground, it's good, and they're going, uh, Daddy, can Paula come with us? And I go, who's Paula? Because we're your best friend, did you not meet her? And they've made a best friend, whereas as adults, it's a lot harder, you know, it is, like where. You know, as I was, as this, we were, last week was Mental Health Week, and we were listening to lots of podcasts on mental health, 
And statistically, they say we're the loneliest society that's ever existed in terms of, you know, we, we're the most connected, but we're very lonely. So, um, where am I going from here? Losing your friend Tom. I'm losing my friend Tom. <laughs> uh, but, but I think it's the one thing, every single person here is like an insecure three-year-old with different strategies. Oh, can, I, can I say that bit? Oh, no. okay. <laughs> please, please. I think every single person in this room is, is like myself, is an insecure three to five-year-old with a different strategy to get love. I'm a doctor. I drive a big car, I drive a vegetable shop. You know, we, we have different means of seeking love and seeking appreciation, so we feel worthy. But and, and really it's about connection. It's about connection and it's about feeling a sense of belonging. So, as Stephen said, we all have different strategies. So where are we going from here? Okay, let's do an exercise, will we? Oh, okay, let's do an exercise. Okay, let's be fun. Okay, so, so really today, today, as we said, it's about data, but I think ultimately these events are so good at making friends, at making connections and building more ripples, because the more we pull together, hands up for men's here. Oh, for, oh, sorry, I have an Irish accent. Hands up who ferments. Any fermenters? Okay, also the race is 20% of them are fermenters. Well done, fermenters. Okay, so think of it like a culture. So we're, we're obviously, lots of the people here are part of the plant-based movement, the whole food, whole food plant-based movement. And think of it like a culture. You know, anyone who ferments, you've got the master culture. And the more you feed that culture, the more it grows and it prospers and it thrives and before that becomes the dominant culture. So, Okay, today is very much obviously the dad, but it's about making friends. So we want... Right. Oh, sure, absolutely. Okay, a uh, little, little kind of intro. So we, we grew up, there's two of us and we had two other bo brothers. Uh, we went to an old boys school. So in terms of our emotional education, it was pretty low, really, really low. Uh, my, I married my wife, uh, she's a clinical psychologist. And she, I remember back when we were getting married, she kind of said, so, so see, tell me about your emotions. I was like, emotions? <laughs> you know, I was really uncomfortable. Uh, and she said, oh, tell me about your emotions. I said, I am really lucky. I only got the good ones. Yeah, I only got the good ones. Yeah, yeah. She said, name. And I was like, okay, uh, happy, uh, tired. Yeah, tired, tired. Uh, I was really struggling here. Am I hungry? Hungry, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then horny, horny, yeah. That's horny. <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty excited. I got four. Uh, she went, you absolute idiot. And she said, like, every human has a full range of emotions and you need to express them. If you don't express them, they will express you. So in Ireland, there's a form of reading. I'm sure it's the same in the UK. Do you, how are you? Well, it wasn't Harriet, but how are you? How are you? Sorry. <laughs> in Ireland, it's a form of greeting, it's Harriet, which means Harriet. how are you in a, you know, dialect. Uh, <laughs> uh, and typically, the answer, if you're an Irish male, it's good, grand, or crap. That's the emotional range. Or not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. That would be about the emotional range. And I'd be making an effort. When someone asks me, how are you? I kind of actually stop, but it takes me about a minute to actually connect with how you feeling. Oh, don't curse. <laughs> and I might go, overwhelmed. Oh, and the person that asked me, who previously told me they were grand, they went, I shit your crap too. And then you actually connect. And I think nowadays we live in this ultra positive society where we all have to be living our best lives on social media. You've got to put the best side out. But inside, many of us are hurting and we're actually, we don't have the strength to show our weakness. So we're going to do that tiny exercise. And I think it's only true discomfort that we're actually forced to grow. So you up for doing this exercise? Yes. 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 yes! yes! Okay, great. Uh, okay, so we're going to ask you to turn to some beside you. Something you don't know, preferably. Something you don't know, because this is about making connections to come outside your comfort zone. Okay, so you go first. What, what? Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to, to turn to the per person. Say one thing. Say one thing. Okay, say one thing which you feel that scared you over the last while, that made you feel insecure. So you go first. Okay, so I felt a little bit insecure here, coming to talk. Here we are. You know, there's all these doctors with data. We don't know. We're wearing shorts. We aren't even wearing shirts. Dave loves the slides with data. All we have is a table with chocolate on it. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. Uh, I felt insecure. Uh, myself and my wife have been married for about eight years, and uh, we have a pretty good relationship. And I remember going, I asked, like, she, she was aware of my emotional education. Uh, and I suggest to her, hey, listen, can we go to therapy and marriage counseling together? Because I really want to learn how to be more emotional and touch. And, and going in there as an Irish male in front of another man to talk about emotions, like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, her, I felt so insecure, but it really helped me. And so, anyway, that's a good story. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> it was fascinating. Was okay, so, so you've got to turn to some person you don't know. We're going to do this exercise for one minute. Tell them, maybe we'll do it for two minutes. Okay. Yeah, one minute, one minute. Okay, whatever, okay. Anyway, just turn and tell them at some stage when you felt insecure. Some stage when you felt this insecure. True vulnerability that we connect. When you felt insecure or for when you went for when you felt scared. Ready, steady, go! <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, Frank tells a story about community in terms of something that we do. So I remember back about eight years ago, we got a letter from this uh, Paddy Cosgrove asking us to go make juice and smoothies at this thing called the Web Summit. And I remember we were invited into this place called the Mansion House. And we were driving a little van. Where was this? This is in Dublin and Ireland. Okay. Uh, and we were driving a little van and selling vegetables. So to be invited into this place called the Mansion House was a really big deal. And we were like, what the fuck is the Mansion House? And we were really excited. And we, we, we rocked in a little van, we set up a little juice and smoothie bar, and we were making juice and smoothies, and someone came up midway through and said, you know that has, I think he said, I think he said, then Jack, he said, yeah, that's Jack Dorsey, he found this thing called Twitter, but I don't know what Twitter is. Uh, and then he said, that fella's weed, he found this thing called Netflix, but I don't know what Netflix is. <laughs> <laughs> he said, that fella's Skype, that fella found Skype, he sold it for like billions, I'm like, I don't know what Skype is. Uh, like, so so we, during the break, we were allowed to go into the talks, and we were allowed to listen to them, I remember leaving that day going, his tech is kind of like, really sexy or interesting, must be a phone. <laughs> <laughs> so the next, the next, over the next week, they managed to organize phones for us, and at the same time, we have young kids, and our, as any of the young kids, they wake up in the middle of the night, and they're like, shh, 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 And we were down one morning, walking May to sleep, and the sun was rising, and I remember, I took a photo, and it took me about half an hour, but I got my first post up on social media, I was like, yes! <laughs> and it was a picture of a sunrise, and people seemed to really relate with it, because it was a new day, hope, dawn, nature, all this type of stuff. So we got in the habit, a little bit of romance, we go down, we see the sunrise, we might go for a swim, and that was our And we take a photo. We take a photo, yes, correct, sorry. Uh, and back about four years ago, I remember it was down there, it was September. It was a manky morning, it was windy, it was a wind twisting, and it was a bit of drizzle, it was a beautiful sunrise. And I was down at the cove and I was just lining up my photo, I got my photo, and then there's this lunatic in soon. And he came out and he was wearing a little tight pair of togs as you expect. And he kind of stood there at the rock like this. And like, okay, we're swimming lads. I was like, inside I was going, oh, I was like, Tread. <laughs> so I put on my togs and I got for a swim. Yeah, I don't even want to do it. But I came back there, we met him, we were chatting. And he introduced himself as Neil, and he said, How are you Neil? Great, great, great. And then when he was leaving, he stood there and he went, See you tomorrow, lads. Good. <laughs> 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 he went to all boys' schools. We were a bit stupid like that. Uh, so then the next day, and then Caroline Barrington joined us in the beach. And then the next day, Hugo joined us. And the next day, we bought tea. And this was September. We weren't sure how long we were going to continue swimming because in Ireland, only lunatics swim through the winter. Like, so we're not going to uh, and we ended up doing October. And then we ended up doing November. And we ended up doing December. It was like, and the bit that made it sustainable, the only bit that made it sustainable was the friendship, the community, the togetherness, the joy, the laughter, the, the sharing of it. Uh, and I remember we've got, we've got hundreds of messages on social media. You get it, it's amazing how tropical Ireland can look in a two-dimensional photo. <laughs> uh, the reality is Baltic, and I've got like hundreds, if not thousands of these messages. I remember back in like two and a half years, maybe even three years ago, I was like, right, enough of this. It was a Tuesday morning, I said, right, we're going swimming on Thursday, and we, we decided to call it swim rise, swimming at sunrise. And everyone's invited, we're meeting at the happy pair at 4.30 a.m. The sunrise was at 4.50 and he said, uh, this is the big, the big hook that's going to draw loads of people. Free porridge and tea. Yes! <laughs> so I met Dave that Thursday morning at 4 a.m. And we decided we'd make, you know, we'd make a little pot of porridge. Yes, pot of porridge. We took it out. We thought it might be five people, maybe ten people. It was about 150 people. <laughs> we walked down the middle of the road. The sun rose. We went for a swim. We made love. It was magical. We're all out and stuff sitting there today. Uh, but, okay, we didn't make love. That's a joke. Uh, so it's really bad for us to be 500 people, 700 people, even 1,000 people in the middle of December coming for a swim at sunrise. And the only thing that makes it sustainable is the community that's together, the friendship. It's the same way. Every single person in this room has weird habits, is unique, is idiosyncratic, is strange, is special. And the more you can find other people that share your similar interests, the more it's like, oh, I don't feel alone. You're like me. Great. You like to swim in the sea in winter. Yes! <laughs> you too. So I think, ultimately, I think real, real joy in life is community. Yeah, okay. Maybe let's do what we'll, we'll do one. Okay. Um, we did, uh, back two weeks ago, we did a tour. We, we spent two weeks and we toured around Ireland talking to schools. We talked to 5,000 kids in 22 schools. And it was really fun, it was gas, really gas, it was funny, it was really good crack. And uh, one thing which we came, came across quite a lot was, um, oh no, I won't even go there. Uh, but when we were reading up about it, there was this family psychologist, Virginia Satcher, who I was reading about. And uh, she, she was an amazing lady, lots of New York Times bestsellers, and she was talking about ideas of how to overcome anxiety, because we realised there was lots of anxiety in the kids. And uh, she said it takes four hugs to simply exist. She said it takes eight hugs a day for maintenance. And she said, if you get 12 hugs a day, you are just going to be a rock star. That's what she said. That was, that was what it was. <laughs> but uh, that, that was what she said. So, um, and, and, you know, hugging people can go, particularly to doctors, and whatever. I'm like, ah, oh, it's just touchy-feely. Show me the data. 
Something like that. And, and, and the data is that it releases oxytocin in our body. It releases oxytocin, it releases serotonin. Oh, 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 thank you, thank you, Stephen. Yes, sorry, I'm not a doctor. It releases oxytocin, it uh, reduces cortisol and stress hormone, and it makes us feel good. So we're going to do a little exercise here. Can everyone stand up, please? <laughs> you know where this is going. Okay, right. Let me make sure you're only two kids talking that we broke. This is an opportunity to go out and show courage. Uh, okay, so this, this event is about connections, it's about community, it's about building and getting more people to more If you feel something in the room that you fancy, this is a great opportunity. Yes, <laughs> what is the connection? So, okay. So your KPI or your mission, and everyone has to do this, is to get 12 hooks. You've got 1.5 minutes to do it. Ready, ready, go! Oh, so you can see the hooks are
It's just mountains. I think I added too much water, but can you see? <laughs> okay, so literally it's just water now. See, it's like a puddle. So this is the bit where it gets a little bit exciting. So we have now ice and water. So we're gonna oh, look, let's just go rogue. Let's just do it again in the middle of the floor, right? Okay, so that's, see, that's a bowl full of ice. So just a bowl full of ice. This is 200 grams of chocolate there, 150 ml of boiling water into it. Yeah? I put one on top of the other. Oh, it did fit perfectly. And now all I do is stir. So what's happening now is that... Oh, can I say one thing? Oh, yeah, This is great. If you ever the aspiration of eating chocolate off someone, it works really well. <laughs> it's true. Okay, so what's happening now is that the ice water is bringing the temperature down of the, the chocolate solution. It's bringing it right down. It's on a cooling trajectory. And as chocolate starts at about the saturated fat, the like cacao water hits about 30 to 29 degrees, it wants to go solid. So because it's boiling water in there, which water normally makes chocolate bloom or seeds, it's normally, it's like, you know, like Superman's nemesis is kryptonite? Sorry, I'm talking really quick, I'm really excited. <laughs> uh, but Superman's nemesis is uh, kryptonite. Normally chocolate's nemesis is water. It makes chocolate bloom or seeds. But in this case, we're gonna make an emulsion. So as the temperature cools, it's gonna to wanna to go so it's gonna form a lovely, beautiful emulsion. So, so, so what do we do with this chocolate mix? Uh, oh yeah, okay, so how we like to serve is, you'll have a beautiful array of very sliced fruit and veg on a plate on a... Or, Not really veg. Okay, like berries, like mangoes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you might have mango or strawberries or figs or pisalis or raspberries or blueberries. You can just put the chocolate mousse in the middle. It's a great one to make at the table because they're like... No, so really cool. I remember we were invited to a friend's house. He just sold his coffee and he bought a big house in Amsterdam just off the main square. And I remember he invited four friends over for dinner. We cooked dinner and we were making an emulsion at the table. Uh, and, and we all sit to free. There was four lads, like, it was kind of funny, you know. Uh, but there was this fellow, Constantine, was mad at him. He thought it was really delicious and he was totally taken out of it. And he was asking for the recipe because he wanted to make it for his wife. And I remember afterwards, uh, when Constantine left, I asked Tony, who's your man, Constantine? He said, oh, that's the Prince of Holland. <laughs> so it's a lovely story. Yeah, it's a true story. Yeah. And he loved it. So, so the moral of the story is if you have a royalty coming around, this goes really well. <laughs> <laughs> well I think I did add too much water. Well, if you did add too much water like Dave did there, you, you just have to give it more time to cool down. Will I pass around a spoon? Yeah, sure. sure. Yeah, pass around anyway. This is impossible spoons. I can pass them around. We'll pass the ball around and just dip it in taste. Literally, if I left it go longer, it would stir more. We literally have to go because we have to catch a plane at 8 o'clock. So I'm just going to pass this around now which you can all dip in. I'll pass the spoon. It'll taste a bit like chocolate water, but it does become very nice. <laughs> So okay, just to recap, David had too much water, it's 0.75, we've done it 100% But what you want to do is stop it just before it starts to go hard. If you need to go too far, you'll end up with something like an arrow bar. Is there an arrow bar? And I think, lovely, if it just go too far, just add a little more boiling water and go through the same process. So you will end up with a beautiful texture. For anyone who's economically challenged and doesn't have a huge amount of coins, it's a great way to take 100 grams of chocolate and turn it into nearly 200 grams. It's a great way of making bones and fishes with chocolate. Yeah, sorry I made a bit of a mess. I'll pass it around like that. Oh, if we pass it around, then we can't bring the ball with us. Okay. Okay, we got it right. Okay, we're going to have to talk. Okay, excuse the chaos. As you can see, we're pretty excited. I'm pretty honored to be here today. We're going to wrap up by just our three tips for health, and I think for happiness. I think point number one, and as you've heard recurrently today, eat more fruit and veg. It's not an all or nothing thing, it's about starting where you're at. I know in an ideal world, everyone is vegan, but do your best. You know, like improve, baby steps. And who knows, you could be like the point doing yoga one day. Yoga pants. Point number two. And point number two is like, uh, the, the reason why we got you jumping up and down was because oxygen is our main fuel source. And so often when we all, in the middle of the day, what do most people turn to when you're tired? Chocolate. <laughs> oh, good man, sleep, and coffee, and chocolate, or alcohol, or drugs. You know, we all turn to different things to give us more energy in the middle of the day. But our primary fuel source is oxygen. So moving more, just moving more. We forget our mammals, and movement makes us feel better. And last and final point, I think this is the most important one, is when they look to the blue zones, the nine factors which predicated these people living long, healthy lives, the most important one was community, it's friendship. When they ask people nowadays in modern day society, if, if let's, let's just do this on little exercise, and just answer in your own head. If at two in the morning you had to call someone because you had a total emergency and someone had to come and help you, how many people do you know that you could call and would definitely come to help you? 
In modern day society, the most common answer is zero. Back about 50 years, the most common answer was six. So it's like society has become very lonely. So I think the most important thing, and we're not going to talk down or now. I think the most important thing in life is about friendship, it's about community, it's about sharing life together. And I think events like this are incredible because it supports you. Everyone helped me today has met new people, has made friends, feels a little more supportive, has met some incredible doctors and heard some incredible science. It feels like, yes, I can do this. <laughs> So we're just going to end by saying thanks a million. It's been a real honour. And uh, it's just a bit chaotic. We're totally chaotic. But uh, I guess just go forth and eat your vegetables. Yeah. Yeah.